Hello friends. Welcome back for another video. So this week I'm hoping to make a butterfly dress with a cute little matching bandana. I've had this fabric for, I don't know, probably a year now. Um, I always, when I buy my fabric, I wash it how I want the garment to be washed and then dry it and put it away in my little sewing cabinet which was an amazing thrift find also probably about a year ago. And so it's been sitting in there and it's one of those things where it's just, it's really cute, just basic cotton fabric. And I've been putting off using it because I just really liked the print and I couldn't find the right like project for it. But when I was looking for a pattern for my Valentine's Day dress, I ended up just grabbing two cause it was like on sale um, from the like major pattern companies. And I always tend to prefer their like vintage pattern styles, obviously, over like the more modern ones. But I decided to grab two. So one is like a typical 50s um, slash 60s, uh, like just A-line dress with a little waist detailing and cute little high collar blouse. And so I'm gonna use that one for the Valentine's Day dress using thrifted tablecloths and fabric. But I wasn't sure what avenue I would want to go down so I also purchased a like 70s style little dress I'll put the pattern here um that has little puff sleeves and a little like collar that joins and I think it would be so cute in like that green color and it's got like contrasty like monarchs on them and it's just such a cute fabric and I think that this design will do it justice if that makes sense and I'm kind of trying to manifest spring. Uh, I know it's not even the end of January, so it's kind of a bit early, but we don't really get a full winter here, as I mentioned in other videos. So it's just not as fun to like look out your window. I don't see snow sitting on the ground or warm and cozy. So I'm dreaming of spring, dreaming of summer, um, and this is a perfect way to try to manifest that. So, that's the plan, is to make this cute little butterfly dress with a matching little bandana. And the pattern does come with like these little 70s like trousers, but I hate pants. I've always hated pants. You can ask my mom, you can look at photos of me from a kid, unless they were velvet and stretchy, I did not wear pants. Um, I only wore skirts and dresses, even if the skirts and dresses were completely impractical. And so, um, I, yeah, I've just never liked pants. I don't like the constrictive feeling around my waist and it feel like they restrict the movement of my legs. So that's kind of the reason why you'll see a bunch of dresses and skirts on my channel. And it's just based on the fact that I hate pants. I'll always hate pants. I am essentially a toddler when it comes to clothing. Do not put me in something that restricts my movement or makes my tummy feel icky. So I did the mock-up and I did this because I tried to pattern grade between two sizes because my bust and my waist and hips are off. And so I don't have to do any bust adjustments, but I tend to have to make adjustments in the shoulders and in the waist. So I attempted to do that before I actually got the pattern on. Uh, it still feels like it might be a bit big, so I might end up cutting down and grading between the 14 and the 16, rather than the 16 and the 18. But I am looking forward to having something that's a little bit shorter in my collection. As I mentioned in my last video, I am getting new leg tattoos. Um, and the appointment actually got moved up, so it was supposed to be last Thursday. It's going to be Tuesday now. I'm filming on Sunday, so I still don't have those tattoos yet. But I will by the time this video is up. So I may have fibbed in the last one, but I didn't want to sit down and refill that part. It didn't make any sense. I had just found out that the appointment got pushed. So, okay. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm at my handy dandy sewing table dining room. And I have my pattern pieces that I've previously cut out. And now I just need to grab the fabric. So this is the print that I was talking about. It's 
technically like quilting cotton, I think. Um, so it's not super thick. It's the perfect fabric for a cute little spring summer butterfly dress. And it's just so cute. I love the little pattern on it. They have cute butterflies. And as a forest entomologist, I have way too many fabrics with bugs on them, bug prints. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. There's no such thing as too many patterns with bug prints, but I have been hoarding this one for a very long time because growing up, orange was like my absolute favorite color. It was actually tied between orange and yellow, but I decided on orange because it was the less popular choice. And I was one of those kids that apparently cared whether or not what they liked was pop culture. Um, I've grown out of that, so personal growth for us all. Wow. <laughs> but nevertheless, if I had to pick my three favorite colors, it would be green, orange, and yellow. So I am excited to finally find a project that I can use this fabric on. Um, since it is just like a normal cotton, I'm going to probably iron it before I cut out the pieces simply because it's been sitting in my stash for a while and I wanna make sure that I'm getting like accurate cuts. And then once I have this all ironed and ready to go, I will pin the pattern pieces and then cut them out. I don't know if I'll have enough room to do it on this table. It's a pretty big table, so theoretically I should have enough room to cut out the pattern pieces. But if I don't, then I might move to the floor and I will channel my inner Rachel Maxey to be a floor troll. Um, but I try to avoid that at all costs since I don't want to absolutely ruin my back and knees. However, there are situations where it's absolutely necessary. I get it. I No, no shade. I have been a floor troll many of videos. I just didn't show it. So, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and iron the fabric and get the pieces laid out and then we will start cutting. Okay, so I have all of the pattern pieces essentially pinned and ready to be cut out. After retrying on my bodice mock-up, I decided that I was gonna go with the size 14 on top and taper to 16. When I was pinning the patterns, I realized that they have the like finished garment measurement of the bust on one of the side front pieces which they didn't have the finished garment measurements on the packet, which is typically what I go off of because I know how much like ease I liked in my garments. And so based on the size 14, I can tell that that's gonna be like an inch and a quarter of ease, which is more than enough. Honestly, it might be too much, we'll see. And given that that's how much ease is in the bust, I'm gonna assume that it's similar in the waist, especially because in my mock-up, when I tapered it down to the 18, I could probably take in an inch of fabric on both sides to be comfortable. So I think the 16 will be just right, if not a little um, tight and snug, which I'm fine with that being kind of snug at the waist. That's typically how my dresses fit. Otherwise, we can start assembling the bodice patterns and all of that good stuff. So. I will be right back and then we will get started. Okay, so we are done doing the front side seams and then also they have you like attach the center front seams together. The next part is essentially to do the like back darts. And once I have the back darts done, I will essentially do exactly what I did for the front. I'll baste the back interfacing on the neckline and then I'll attach the back with the side back. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the back darts and get the back pieces together, and then I'll meet you back here again, and we will see how the garment is fitting. Cause you all know, I love to try on things as we go to make sure that it's going in the right direction. So I will see you guys in just a couple minutes. Okay, so we are back at a different day. I essentially just ran out of time 
And this week has been really, really hectic for me. I don't know why it's just been flying off the wall so busy, but I have my zipper finally. And so the directions essentially want me to put the zipper in before I attach the side seams. And typically I, I don't do it this way. Typically I have everything put together and I put the zipper in last, but I might attempt to do it before attaching the front and back together simply because that's what the directions say and maybe there's a reasoning behind it, who knows. Uh, so I have my little zipper and that's essentially what I'm gonna work on next is putting the zipper in and attaching the front and the back pieces. And then all that's left is doing the collar facing and the sleeves, which the sleeves, I have elastic for it and I think I can modify some of my current double fold bias tape into single fold. I don't know, we'll see. But that's gonna be the next step for this little 70s inspired dress. I finally have my new tattoos. So the day has come, it has passed. That is honestly probably why I felt like this week was so busy is that part of my week, I had to drive an hour and a half to go get these tattoos, which I am happy to drive. She is my absolute favorite artist as I mentioned in last week's video. She's just so cool. We, sh I feel like we just get each other in terms of like designs and styling. We're both Aries babies. So I just feel like it just, we hit it off. I, I really enjoy her. And so for the design, we actually decided to leave the insects out this time. She showed me what she was thinking. And once I saw it, I was like, yes, absolutely. That is artwork, put it on my body. I need it now. And it just felt like if we added any insects right now, it wouldn't make sense. So I think that's just gonna be another piece. But update on that, I do have them. They're probably next to my Hobbit holes, my favorite tattoos that I have so far. And they're just absolutely stunning. You'll see them in the reveal because the dress should be short enough to show it. But just a little update, I do have the new tattoos. They are amazing as I could have ever imagined and of course had to share with you guys. So outside of that, let's go ahead and figure out how to get this little zipper into the dress and the dress at least semi-constructed so we can try it on and make sure that everything fits. So I did not follow the directions. I just am not a huge fan of doing the like zip and baste. I know it probably turns out cleaner, but for some reason, the way that I learned how to put in a zipper was just to put the zipper in first and then sew up the bottom of the skirt to like match the zipper. But here's our first little try on. It's over a dress and my little corset. I took the skirt off. So it is like a, not, I guess it's not tight. It's still wearable, uh, but that's beneficial. So I know that if I wanted to like layer this for winter time, um, it would still fit quite well. So now that the zipper's in and the side seams are done, I essentially just need to work on the collar, the sleeves and hemming, and then the dress will be done. But I still wanna make the cute little bandana that will go with the dress to kind of give it that springy, summery, cottagecore vintage vibe. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And I just wanted to give you guys a little bit check since I like the overall fit and I think the grading of the sizing from the 14 to the 16 really helped make it fit a lot better. I think if I had kept with the 16 and the 18, this would have been way too big and I would have had to have done a lot of alterations after the fact, especially in the bust. Like I feel like the bust line is very well fit right now. And if I can get the sleeves to fit right and take in some of that excess fabric, I'm really not too worried about it. Okay, so I essentially have sewn the seams together for the zipper. So that's all set and looks pretty good. I still need to press it, but the next step is to work on the collar. So the first little like actual like choker collar part I've cut out and have pressed, there's still like a seam open from where I flipped it. Um, but the next step it looks like is to attach these to the neckline of the dress. 
So they have it so that this is open, so you have to open it up a little. And have it kind of like this, so you can see the armholes. And then it looks like we attach this here, like along the sides. Oh, this way. And it says to baste it, which I know is probably a good idea, but genuinely, I just don't like basting. I find that pins, like unless you're working with really slippery fabric, I don't find that it does much in terms of holding things in place. I think it just ends up being kind of annoying to take out afterwards. Okay. So they're at the shoulders. Essentially, after putting these on in this direction, we're gonna add the neck facing over top and then stitch it all together all at once. So I'll actually probably get to use my walking foot again, which I love it, so I'm happy to do. Um, and then once you put the neck facing on, you will stitch it and then we'll figure it out from there. Okay, I'm gonna read the instructions and try and work on this a bit and hopefully come back once I at least have the collar part done. Someone needs to roast me in the comments for not getting my serger looked at. So essentially the problem is that when I go to thread it, uh, the little lever that pulls out a specific piece that you have to thread one of the like spools through will no longer come out. So it needs to be taken in. I cannot seem to find the time or the willpower to remember to do it and to like, I don't know, like I could have had it finished by now, you know? So please, if you give me any additional criticism from this video, please let it be for me to go get my serger fix because I feel like external motivation would actually really help and make me feel bad and then I would actually do it. So because I don't have my serger fixed um, and now I know that I like the fit of the dress and I'm not really worried about um, having to like undo the seams or anything like that. I am just gonna go through and zigzag stitch my seams. Um, I think I'm going to zigzag them open so there's less bulk so that you can't see it. So that essentially means I'm zigzagging each side of this. It's gonna take up a lot of thread though so I might switch my thread out and do something that I have more colors in because if I have to do some top stitching and hemming, I want it to still match. Um, so I might do it in white or something since the inside of the fabric's kind of white. Um, but I'm gonna do that before I actually attach the collar. But once the collar's attached, it's essentially just moving on to doing the sleeves and the hem, which I know I've kind of explained already so far, but I like to like keep a list in my head as I'm going because I will forget the steps. And when I look at like a sewing pattern or like a sewing uh, instruction guide with just words and like only some pictures, it's not enough for my brain. I have to say it out loud. So sorry if that's repetitive and you hate it, but it helps me. And technically I guess this whole process is just for me. Really, I'm glad you guys like it, but again, the camera, the all-seeing camera, really just ends up being like a babysitter and um, making sure that I do all the steps. So let's go ahead and get started on that, and then I will meet you guys back here once the collar is all set and polished. So essentially for the sleeves, I just ran the elastic through the bias tape, and then they were essentially ready to attach. Hello, we are back another day. So uh, I did get the sleeves attached. So our little garment now has the tiny little puff sleeves and I've tried it on and it looks very cute. The shoulders are almost too wide for me and this pattern does have like a really easy way to adjust the shoulder width. So I'll talk about that a little more when we do like our little wrap up of things I would change or do differently. 
And so now that the sleeves are attached, I just have to do some finishing touches, which is essentially all of the boring stuff, like hand tacking down the uh, like facing and doing the hemming. But once the hemming and the facing and the buttons are added, the dress is essentially done. We have a visitor, our resident sewist helper, Mr. P has arrived. He has been very lazy today and kind of just been uninterested in what I'm doing, which is definitely a new feeling. Um, but he seems to like the dress too. He is currently just sitting on it, hanging out, um, but he needs to be brushed. So I'm definitely gonna do that today. Once I do all the finishing touches, I will move on to the little like bandana. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on all of this tedious stuff. And then I'll meet you guys back here to do the bandana. And then essentially we'll do the reveal and we'll get to see this cute little 70s inspired, <laughs> uh, 70s inspired dress um, in real time. Okay, so I went ahead and I just cut out two long triangles essentially of my like extra fabric. And I think I'm just going to put them right sides together and sew them up and leave just one section open. Probably the bottom or the ties. So that way I can flip it inside out and finish it. But this part should be the easy part technically. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so it is officially time for the wrap up of the 70s style butterfly dress that I made this week, including the little cute bandana. And overall, I think it turned out exactly how I was hoping it would. It fits adorably and is very comfortable to wear. It's not extremely tight and it's breathable and it looks adorable when you pair it with like a little waist belt, you know, there's just so many possibilities. And I really would only change a couple things going forward. If I wanted to make this dress again, I think I would shorten it at the waist um, and remove some of the bulk that's in the back, which tends to happen to me. Um, and I just like to use the pattern as is the first time and then adjust it if I need to. So that's why I didn't shorten it before trying the pattern this time. And it wasn't something that was accounted for in my bust mock-up because it didn't go all the way down. Um, which is, you know, a failing for only doing part of a mock-up. But honestly, if I tried to do the full mock-up, I probably wouldn't have done the dress. Um, and that's just a fault of mine that I'm trying to work on. But I'm at the very minimum trying to do the parts that are important, which is the bust. Um, when it comes to actually being able to wear it. Um, and other than that, I might just take the shoulders in a little bit. So the shoulders kind of stopped um, pretty far out. So they're almost a drop shoulder on me. And the pattern has a place for you to shorten the um, width of the shoulders. So I think I might just try that next time as well. Last but not least, the only other change I might make is grading the 14 all the way down until my, I hit my hips. So there was extra fabric in the waist, but that might not be needed if I end up shortening the waistline and getting it to fit better there. Uh, I think there just might have been some extra fabric in terms of how long that waist curve is in the pattern versus on my body, if that makes sense. In the end, it turned out exactly how I was hoping and it makes me long for warmer weather, spring, my birthday, all of that good stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this week's video of me making a cute little spring-summer 
butterfly dress with a adorable little matching bandana. And I will hopefully see you guys next week. And again, if it gets too busy, it might be the week after that. But don't worry, I have things planned and things that I want to do. So you guys will continue to get videos from me as long as I have little ideas running in my tiny little brain. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.